Okay, so in this lecture, we will look at periodic functions, what they are, and some of their elementary properties. Periodic functions are, you know, are uh, a basic idea or a basic uh, ingredient, you know, in our discussion of Fourier series, which is coming up a little bit later. But in this lecture, we will look at some basic properties of periodic functions. Okay, so we start with this definition. So a function f of x is periodic if f of x plus p is equal to f of x for every x, right? So this is a property that this, you know, the uh, there is uh, inherent in this definition also the idea of p. So and which is the period. So the number p is called uh, the period, right? So immediately from this definition, it's very intuitive, right? So we have come across periodic functions, and uh, again you know closely related to the idea of uh, in the context of simple harmonic motion for example right so you have seen periodic functions and they are ubiquitous in physics we come up we look at you know phen phenomena which are periodic in nature we also uh, you know work with systems where you know you have an external force or a drive which you can uh, you know, which is you can bring in and you can bring in a periodic uh, external force and how the system uh, behaves and under the application of such forces are, you know, are very important ideas and they appear in all kinds of fields and subfields of physics. Right? So periodic functions are, uh, you know, are of great importance in physics. Now a periodic function is like what we have defined and the number p is the period. Right? So immediately from this definition we see that if p is a period then so is you know any multiple of t also must be a period right so you know typically we are interested in you know the, the smallest such p right that's what we we mean by the period although strictly by speaking from this definition you know p if p is a period then so is 2p right because f of x plus 2p is equal to f of x plus p which is equal to you know f of x right so it's um, yeah. So we are usually going to be interested in the smallest such p, and that's what we, we term as the period. So an example of a periodic function, you know, we can think of from music, where if you're producing a pure tone, tone right? Some instruments, uh, you know, something like a, a a tuning fork or something, which can produce a pure tone of frequency omega naught, and it it's perfectly, you know, sinusoidal. Uh, tone and it has just one well defined frequency and then you could represent that with some sinusoidal function so it's just like in simple harmonic motion you have a times sine of omega naught t plus phi but in general you know even very elementary uh, you know, um, instruments right so produce much more complicated sounds right so if you strike a piano key you might think that you're just you know playing just one pure note but in fact this pure note is is going to contain not just one frequency, but it's going to have, you know, what is called a, a a fundamental, and all multiples of this fundamental frequency, which are called overtones, right? So, if the fundamental has some frequency omega naught, you would expect to hear, you know, uh, superpositions which are of frequencies two omega naught, three omega naught, four omega naught, so on, and all integral multiples of the frequency of the fundamental are going to be present right so suppose you you know consider these two kinds of functions so here i have f1 of t is sine of t plus half sine 2t plus 3 sine of 3t right so which are just some you can consider some arbitrary coefficients right i'm just considering you know a harmonic here and you know these two overtones here and a harmonic here and three overtones here right you can play with this you can consider even a larger number, a smaller number of overtones and so on. So I want to plot these two functions and yeah, so you see if I, I here I have plotted you know this function f1 of t and then also I have plotted just the, uh, the fundamental right. So what I want to observe from this, this uh, plot and I have one more plot which is which is again for the second function and you know in comparison with its fundamental frequency so I, I see that 
you know, uh, this you know very complicated function which comes from just you know the superposition of just three or four harmonics. Already it looks quite complicated, but you see that if you observe carefully that you know they have, there is this repeating tendency, and in fact, it's going to repeat exactly like the the fundamental does, right? So what you can say is in fact the sum of terms corresponding to a fundamental musical tone and its overtones has the same period as the fundamental right which we can explicitly verify right so if you you have you have a function f of t which is made up of you know sin omega naught t plus phi n plus sin of 2 omega naught t plus uh, uh, plus phi uh, uh, phi 1 and phi 2 and so on right so i have so I have a bunch of coefficients which in principle can run all the way up to infinity so if this, you know it can you can have an infinite series of this kind right so uh, so the point is that term by term every term has exactly the same period right which we can explicitly verify right so defining t is equal to 2 pi by omega naught we see that f of t plus t is equal to summation over you know wherever we have t we have to put t plus 2 pi by omega naught and then if you expand this, you see that there is a, this, uh, you know, is the same as writing sine of n omega naught t plus phi n plus 2 n pi. And we know that, you know, the sine function is, is a periodic function. So if you add an integral multiple of 2 pi to its argument, it remains unchanged. So in fact, term by term, this function is unchanged when you, you know, increment t by capital T. Therefore, f of t plus t itself is equal to f of t. So in fact, the overall function itself has exactly the same period. No matter how complicated the overall function looks, it is going to be periodic and with the same period as the fundamental. Right? So uh, I also want to consider another example where, you know, just like we saw how, you know, functions which look very complicated, apparently, apparently very complicated, but in fact, they refer to the simple harmonic motion. So likewise, here you could you could have apparently you know very complicated looking functions, but actually they they refer to just a, sim, a single harmonic. So like in this example, sine of two t plus sine of two t plus pi by three. But if I uh, invoke the standard trigonometric identity involving sine c plus sine d, then in fact I I see that um, f a of t is the same as sine of 2t plus pi by 3. So although it looks like there are two terms, right, if you have to arrange them properly and then you can bring it into this first standard form and then you see that in fact it is just a single harmonic with uh, you, uh, consisting of just the fundamental harmonic with amplitude a equal to 1 and frequency omega naught equal to 2. And another example is, you know, is, is this one where again invoking the trigonometric identity you can verify that this is just minus square root to sine of um, pi t minus pi by 4. Therefore, this too is, a, is just a fundamental harmonic with amplitude square root 2. Amplitude, like we said, is necessarily positive and frequency omega naught is pi, right? So this is just to illustrate that, you know, one must uh, be careful with looking at functions and bring them into standard form before drawing conclusions. So the main moral of you know this discussion is that if you have a fundamental and you know superpose it with a bunch of harmonics, then the resulting function can be extremely complicated, but still it has you know the same period as that of the fundamental. And oftentimes we are interested in the opposite question, which is that you're given a signal which is incredibly complicated, right? And we want to ask if it is possible to think of this very complicated periodic function in terms of various harmonics, right? So this is basically the heart of the Fourier series problem. And then when you, if you're able to express a complicated periodic function in terms of, you know, uh, a fundamental and its harmonics, you know, various coefficients, if you are able to pull out, then you can just work with the, all these coefficients and understand, you know, how, what is the contribution of various harmonics or overtones to this problem and it gives us a lot of insight if we are able to do this, right? So as we, we will see how, what is the prescription for working this out and then we will look at you know, how gentle this method is and how it can be used. All of this is coming ahead. That's all for this lecture. Thank you.